seeing as it's just past seven here, we will uh, call this uh, June uh, 5th uh, meeting of the DRB to order. Um, we'll start by introducing the members uh, starting at my right. Jean Leon, board member. Catherine Burgess, board member. Meredith Crandall, staff. I'm Rob Goodwin, the chair. Alex Hellas, new board member. Uh, Joe Kiernan, board member. Now, Alex, if you want to just pull your microphone up uh, right there. Yeah. I thought we weren't using it. No, no. Uh, we are for everybody remotely and for the recording minutes. <laughs> the microphones don't matter for people in the room. Got so it. we still need to speak up and speak into the microphones. And when people come up to testify, they'll have to speak into microphones, too. It's taken me like four years to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's do it all. Yeah, we, we, and people have to get reminded all the time. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, so the meeting is called to order. Um, just turn it over to Meredith real quick for a brief review of our procedures, uh, particularly related to the um, remote aspect of this uh, meeting. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, the stuff on the screen is mostly for anybody who is uh, watching the meeting over Orca Media. Oh, and of course it's doing all sorts of fun stuff here on me. All right. So for those viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media. You can participate in the meeting via the Zoom platform, either through video or telephone access options. Um, so if you want to be able to have it all integrated with video and you can see us and we can see you, um, you're gonna wanna type this web address um, right into your platform. It will bring you into the Zoom meeting. I'll just need to, to let you in, but I'll get a notification of that. Um, alternatively, you can dial this phone number and when prompted, type in this meeting ID. And again, I'll get a notification and let you into the meeting. Um, if anybody is trying to get into the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those who are attending via Zoom, note that turning your video on is optional. Um, for everyone attending remotely, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand, either physically if your video is on or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, then once you have been called on by the chair, you can state your name once you're unmuted um, and then ask your question or make your comment. Um, for applicants that are on remotely, Paul, you've done this before, you understand that the, the system's a little different, you'll get a, a chance to, to talk and not necessarily have to raise your hand for it. Um, so if you do get called on to speak, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record um, and Sorry, just scanning because there's some stuff I don't need to say. Um, and then note that if I get noticed that the public is having problems accessing their meeting um, and I can't walk them through and get them logged in, then the uh, meeting will need to be continued to a time, place, and certain um, specifically for whatever hearing they're logging on for, whichever application. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Uh, we'll now take a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Jean, second, second by Catherine. Um, all those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. Aye. We have an agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, we want to welcome our uh, new board member, Alex. Um, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself, tell you a little bit about yourself for tonight's meeting? Um, <laughs> I live in Montpelier on Baldwin Street. I'm actually a neighbor to 149th State, George's property. Um, we moved here about 11 years ago, but I've lived in central Vermont for almost 50. Um, I'm about to retire from a 30-year teaching career at Dartmouth College. Before that, I taught at Union 32. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us, Alex. It's uh, great to have you. Um, so we have a uh, Three applications this evening. Um, two of them are sketch plan applications uh, that were 
Um, you know, we we reviewed those on uh, you know May first. Um, and um, and then also uh, included in tonight's package are some draft rules, um, uh, revised rules of our uh, a procedure um, for the DRB that we've been working on revising. There'll be no vote on that uh, tonight, um, but uh, board members take those and review them. Those are also made available to the public via the agenda and the website. If you have comments on those, please contact uh, Meredith. Uh, we'd be interested if you have any input. Um, and um, that being said, um, we can review the May 1st meetings from the DRB. I have no issue with voting to approve these. Um, we don't have everyone here, um, but uh, you've got three. Uh, yeah, right. You need, but, but it's um, it's you don't have to have been in attendance at the meeting to actually vote on the minutes. Really? Te te technically. I've conferred with council on this. You don't necessarily have to for minutes, um, as long as you have some people who are voting for it. Um, I know it's procedurally. Um, most most boards and committees do require a quorum who's been there. Um, it's not legally required from what I've been advised. Um, and our our the DRB's rules of procedure don't actually say specifically right now. Yeah. Um, so it's up to you guys if you want to wait until you have four members who were at the meeting um, or if you want to do it now. Well, maybe we postpone it to a nice meeting. Joe can't necessarily vote on it either because a third of it was his application anyway. So. Oh, right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> no, that's actually probably a good point. I mean, it's not like we have a situation where we don't have members anymore. Like, we've had that happen before sure. where members were no yeah. longer part of the board. Yeah. Uh, all good right. Point. So uh, we will uh, move that uh, to the, uh, uh, the next uh, meeting of the DRB. Um, okay. And yep. um, move on to our first application meeting. Uh, George Estes, if you want to step up. Hello, my name is George Estes. Um, the residents were implying about this was 149 State Street, Montpelier. Okay, great. Um, if you want to just hold on one second, thank you for the introduction. Um, do we have anyone on our electronic platform that will be uh, testifying on this application? Uh, seeing none, um, we will uh, swear you in as a witness for this application and uh, and then and move along here. Um, so. Those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? Okay. Yeah. Raise your right hand. Great. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you, George. Um, so yeah, if you want to, as you were as you were doing, just give a brief overview of your application here. And okay, um, um, I purchased the building in August on 149, um, and the building has uh, com commercial uh, office space now. Um, and right now, um, the space, because of the way the world is, I can't seem to occupy all the office spaces that are in the building. So I'm trying to come up with some type of revenue to keep the building afloat and keep it with in compliance with everything that I need to do and then try to offer um, a and b situation for short-term night, like uh, legislatures or a Friday, Saturday, Sunday rental to offer for the weekend for people or families to come up. Um, it's just a short-term uh, rental units per one. Um, it's not like I'm trying to get a long-term rental monthly on each one of those individual spaces. It's basically a short-term rental to try to bring in extra revenue for the building. That's on the one unit. That's on the smaller unit. Excuse the, me. Say the the short-term rentals on the smaller unit. There's there's actually three different um, spaces. Basically, the biggest one is about. Uh, 210 square feet and the other ones are all 176 and the other ones like 169 or something like that there's two smaller ones okay great well thank you for the context of the project here um, Meredith do you want to give us a little technical analysis here of what's going on and uh, we can then proceed yeah um, so uh, this is 
I think probably the first time we've had a congregate living application actually come before the board. Um, so the way our regulations define congregate living, um, which is what I've brought this up to you as, um, it is where you have um, dwelling units that are sharing a you know key or key ele key element or elements of a um, dwelling unit, um, and in this case. There are kitchen facilities, there's bathroom facilities, but the different units are really sort of bedroom bedroom spaces, right? And they'll be sharing a communal kitchen bath space. Um, and so that really, that fits in with what we call congregate living um, under our definitions. So that's come here. It's in the, the zoning district in mixed use residential it's a conditional use um, under our current zoning, any congregate living. So um, it's before the board because I can't approve it. Um, I don't really see any red flags. I feel you know, there's a lot of red in the staff report because there are tight places where the board has to make the determination. Um, but there's lots of parking. The use isn't you know, really gonna overlap with the commercial use that's continuing there from what I see, the existing office uses. Um, but the, the board has to make some of these final determinations, um, in, especially in the conditional use chapter of uh, 330, where I've given some suggestions, but I think you know digging a little more um, in discussion with George about a few of those items just to make sure things are on the record. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, did the design review have any recommendations? Oh. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, yes, so uh, a subset of the application was some changes that George needed to make to a uh, railing for a second story um, porch space, balcony space for uh, life and safety code and insurance code requirements. Um, the design review committee was fine with those railing changes. Um, the DRB sort of has to check mark on it so that I can issue the, the permit. Um, they made one optional uh, recommendation, which was that if George wanted, he could paint the new interior lattice black, which especially from a distance would make it so that what you're really paying attention to is the historic lattice that's up in the front. Um, but that historic lattice is, um, has the holes in it are too big for insurance purposes. Um, but the design review committee and our standards really don't want to remove that lattice and completely replace it. You've got to do something so you can keep that historic material. Um, th mm -hmm. That was probably, that's been on there as far as we can tell since the building was built. Sure. Um, so that they were they were fine with that aspect of it. Thanks for reminding me, Rob. Yeah, that's all. Uh, okay. Um, so I guess on to digging into our review here. Um, does the board sort of understand the congregate living uh, definition and do you feel comfortable with the staff's analysis of determining that this is a congregate living uh, situation? Am I right in understanding that there's still going to be office spaces that also have access to the bathroom and the kitchen? Yes. There's four bathrooms in the building. Two are ADA approved downstairs. The upstairs is not ADA approved. But there's two bathrooms upstairs that are common bathrooms for all the tenants not tenants, excuse me, commercial people that are there that occupy the offices now. They share the common spaces, the common entranceways, the common fire exits and fire entrances, um, the common hallways, the buildings open from each end um, so they can use the downstairs or the upstairs as they will or wish. Okay. This isn't a question, but just yeah. for the record. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this makes sense uh, to def you know, to um, categorize this as congregate living. I know you're always thinking about, uh, you know, continued refinements to the code. When I, you know, I think a textbook congregate living would be full-time occupants. So to me, this is, you know, this is short-term congregate living. So I think we have the information we need to make a determination for this and to discuss it this evening. But that might be something to think about longer term. So. Since that point was raised, can I? Yes, Meredith, go up? ahead. Um, so there, 
the planning department, planning commission are going to be working on some tweaks to some of the residential use definitions. Um, you're going to want to keep an eye on the planning commission agendas. Um, but one of the points that has been raised several times is that um, we really don't feel like we can dig into the type of residents that are going into a residential use, um, whether it's a long-term lease, a short-term lease, uh, uh, Airbnb, once you start digging into those details, the question of who is using that space starts coming up. Um, and so we're, we're honestly, at least Mike Miller and I are feeling like we really need to stay away from that. Um, and there's some discussion about even stepping back and looking at trying to make sure that congregate living uses are regulated more in parity with the other dwelling unit uses so that maybe you're looking more at the scope of the size of the congregate living to determine whether or not it is a conditional use or a permitted use versus right now in mixed use or residential once you go into congregate living no matter how many how many square feet of it you use that's immediately a conditional use whereas there are multiple options for a full-size dwelling unit that is just permitted doesn't need to come to the board um, so if you start looking at short-term rental versus long-term rental it starts uh, we don't know if we want to go there ultimately it's going to be planning commission and city council decision yeah. and i don't that, and i think that makes sense so I, to me yeah. i thought it's important to raise that yeah, for yeah, the yeah. record since we haven't had um an yeah. application like this so perfect yeah agreed thank you thank you Catherine. i think it's important to include that into our discussions here um so uh i think the next uh, area of analysis here is um looking at parking and loading as it relates to our regulations in this project um Ref meredith you reference a 1993 blueprint of the property is yeah, that it's in your packet is it in the packet yep it should be in the packet um, there should be a fold out. Did you guys get this? No. Oh, it's on the computer. Oh, okay. So let me just rip mine out. Sorry. No, it's all right. No, that didn't get printed. So I got the agenda. Yep. So um, so that's the site plan yep. from there, and those are some additional pictures that I put in that should yep. have been listed in the staff report. Yeah, I see the pictures. I just the okay. So yeah, once you take a peek. Yep. Uh, so ha, huh, that's because I printed this one out for myself. Yep, I can do a screen share for sure. Yep. Let me do that. Give me one second. I got it. I got it online. Yep. Let me uh, simplify my options here and close a couple things out so let me screen share where is it uh, hmm there we go oh you walk i live on day one All right, so there is that. So those thicker lines are where I just sort of highlighted um, some parking lines that were on that site plan. Um, so here's State Street. Here's the building as existing. This was a, a site plan that was put forward when they were doing the new ADA ramp. Um, under those regulations, once they did the new ADA ramp, they weren't actually evaluating parking. Um, that wasn't part of the decision, but they put they they had to adjust these parking spaces down here um, to become parallel, parallel, yeah, parallel spaces. Sorry, um, so that there was room for the ramp and access here because this bumped things out. 
Um, so that's why that was on here, but they didn't actually mark all of the available parking spaces. Um, but that shows, you know, a minimum of what's there. And then there are some images that I included that show, these are from different time periods. So this is the ex sort of existing 2023 image from um, Google Maps. And you can see some of the parking lines that were already in here painted. Um, and then a little bit, it looks to be maybe a little bit older image just from the quality of the, um, quality of the image. Um, there's clearly, I mean, there's been parking all along both sides here. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. No, because there's the, the, there's no, um, the only change is that railing. And so in the design review, um, review, they had to consider the historic nature of the building when looking at that railing, but otherwise for the change of use, there's nothing else changing on the exterior of the building. Um, and they, they, you know, even, even just this one line of parking provides sufficient parking yes. for the two uses that are going to be happening here. I tend to agree with staff that there's much sufficient parking on this, uh, you know, this parcel, especially as it relates to this uh, change of use. Um, so I don't, I don't see any real change there than what's being proposed. Um, I'm okay with that. Um, the next item would be landscaping and um, screening. And um, are you proposing any changes to the exterior of this building? No. No. Well, basically, I'm going to put some hostas and some plants and buy the front uh, sign and by the front handicap entrance because it's mm -hmm. got that ragweed and I've been pulling it out trying to get rid of it. So it's one of the things, it's just the front of the building on the street side that there's where the signs are and it's just this disgusting ragweed that I've been pulling out every year. Yeah. And now I'm just trying to better the to appearance of the front of the building. Um, so just some clarification on your comment here. Um, on my comment? Yes, your comment. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, were you suggesting like a sketch of the, of the interior of, of like what? Okay. What page are you on? Um, I'm on, <laughs> sorry. I'm on page 10 of the staff report. Okay. Um, referring to the, well, starting the conditional use standards. Mm -hmm. Um, were you suggesting a, a, you know, a detail of like the layout inside of like? No, which... no, no. Just, just the description that was given earlier that the bathroom and the okay. kitchen are going to be shared with the three congregate living units. Gotcha. And how, how that use was going to happen. Okay. So that's, that's all I meant. Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't yeah. think you needed to submit anything in writing on that. Okay. Wonderful. Um, drawings. Yep. No, that's, that's fine. Um, free to chime in, boards, <laughs> board members, if you want. If you if you want, um, I'm seeing this is quite a quite a minimal uh, change here from the current uh, use with uh, yeah. you know. I'd like, good. Uh, I'd yes, like Gene. To entertain a motion. Oh, okay. so just or, or just make. We got to go through the. You guys through. have to go through the conditional use ones because yeah. I can't make those determinations. Yeah. So I've made suggestions, but on those you got to actually talk about the Review. the capacity yeah. of community facilities and utilities, mm -hmm. so just, uh, traffic, page. the three three zero two on. So page. Uh, it starts on page. What? So yeah. not ten. Nine yeah. ten. Yeah. You know just. It, it can be sort of a checkboxy thing, but yep. um, officially, those are the. That's why it's here. Just for that. Um, my understanding is that you're working with the city to look at your water and your sewer allocations for this project. See that again. You're looking. You're working with the the city um, to look at the the water and the sewer capacity for the for the project. Yes. Nope. Yeah. Um, 
and um, no no real concerns there about the, the change of use, uh, as I understand it. Yeah, I, from, from what I talked to them, basically, the, I was proposing to do it, and they said the occupancy of the 14 tenants that are in the building now, offices, that right now the building isn't even occupied fully, yeah. so the water and the waste has actually been lower than at previous years that it's been used. So now that the usage is less than it was three years before COVID, there was, the building was full. So yeah. the amount of water and sewer that it was being used was more than it is now. Sure. So I mean. Sure. Okay. I tend to agree with staff on the um, facilities of water and sewer. I think when it comes to uh, the uh, the traffic in the area, I don't see any issue either. I think there's plenty of parking. Uh, I think we, we discussed about the spillover onto the street of on-street parking, probably not an issue uh, here. Uh, and um, yeah, so any board members have any comments on the traffic? Very walkable setting where Absolutely. people might park and then enjoy not using their car for a lot of the weekend. Um, so I just a little bit about character of the neighborhood. Um, this is kind of a, a broad uh, brush that gets painted, uh, you know, over the city. Uh, I, I don't see any issues with character of the neighborhood. I think this is, you know, maybe the great type of transition that we should be, you know, looking at uh, for changing changing times. Um, board members have any other comment? Wonderful. Um, so we can move on here to the um, architectural compatibility. The designer review did review this. Um, and for the for, railing, yeah. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be for, because that's separate from the conditional use review. I got you. Right, there's no changes specifically associated with the use. Okay. Um, and then um, yards, lots, and landscaping um, here. Um, do not have any uh, exterior changes uh, to the parcel, so uh, therefore don't see any issue there. Um, and so uh, I guess ultimately here uh, we have to decide for the regulations of this with this uh, new use is compatible um, with the neighborhood and the, you know, existing use and uh, board members feel like this complies. All righty, <laughs> seeing none. Um, I, I think we've hit the major uh, major points on this. Uh, like I said, quite a sort of major, minor, minor change here to the current configuration and uh, type of activity on the property. Um, Meredith, did we uh, did we miss anything? I don't think so. No. I think that's I think that's everything. It's yeah. You know, it was one of those ones where I was trying to come up with writing the staff report. And yeah. I was like, well, <laughs> I don't really need that many facts from George because it all just sort yeah, of I mean, works. I think it's yeah. It's a <coughs> pretty simple si simple project, easy to grasp, and um, yeah. So um, seeing that, I I'll accept a motion. Motion Go to ahead, grant Jean. Uh, the request for conditional use and minor site plan approval to convert the 600 square feet of office space at 149 State Street into congregate living rooms as presented in application number Z-2023-0057 and supporting and supplemental materials. Motion. Second. Motion by Jean, uh, second by Joe. Um, Okay, is there any uh, discussion on the motion? Okay, um, seeing none, um, I will start a roll call vote. Uh, Jean, how do you vote? Yes. Jean, yes. Catherine? Yes. Alex? Yes. Joe? Yes. And Rob, myself, goes yes. That's unanimously approved. Thank you, George. Thank you very much. So, George, uh, this is your verbal okay the official okay has to be in writing okay we'll get to that decision as soon as we can um and because there were no special conditions on the approval when we issue the decision 
um, and get Rob to sign it. We'll also issue the permit so you'll get everything at once for zoning. Okay. Um, you can keep working with Michelle on the building permit part um, and continue to work with uh, Kurt on any water sewer issues. Right. Um, but feel free to come in and chat with me if you need to about okay. any of it. But I will, I will reach out as soon as the stuff is ready for you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome, George. Before we move on, yep. uh, Ben, Merrill, could you just unmute and let me know which application you're on here for tonight? Oh, hi. I'm just joining as part of the uh, Gove Community Garden. I uh, don't really have any input, just uh, spectator. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, John and Maureen Miller. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, next application we have uh, is uh, number five and number seven, uh, Vine Street, which was a uh, Subdivision we did sketch plan on, uh, I believe, on uh, May 1st-ish, uh, our last uh, meeting of the DRB. Um, and they're here for a uh, two-parcel final uh, subdivision uh, plan. Um, so since we are on the record uh, this time, uh, we'll be swearing both of you in as a witness. Is there anyone else on our Zoom platform here to testify on this uh, application? Uh, seeing none. Um, those interested in the Millers um, in providing testimony in this application, would you raise your right hand? Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. All right. Yes. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I guess I will stay with start where we start. Uh, you know, this application was a I think a very well prepared uh, sketch plan application that we had a good discuss, uh, discussion on um, the last uh, the last meeting. Um, Meredith, do you want to give us an update on if anything's changed since since then and um, where we're at? Yeah. Um, so as the board remembers, this is a, a two parcel subdivision of already um, developed land, so that the ultimate um, proposal is to divide up a piece of land that currently has two single family homes on it so that each home has its own parcel um, with a shared driveway um, and there'll be a access easement so that the parcel that doesn't own the driveway gets to park there and use it um, and and all the necessary rights um, so the the items that have been added we now have draft language about that um, easement that will get recorded there's also um, a little more detail about where those sewer lines run, because yep. um, that was one of the questions raised. Um, and you know, it, it's it all seems to have been been tied up as best you can without you know d digging up the driveway to confirm yeah, exactly yeah. where the sewer lines run. <laughs> um, you know, there's only so much you can do, but I think that the the um, there's enough information in here so that anybody buying either one of those parcels is going to have the information they need to plan um, for any future future work. Um, there's a tiny bit of information, a little tweak that I think should be made to the final plat before it's recorded. Okay. Um, that's noted in the staff report. Wonderful. Um, but that's that's I think that was this one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> having both both of these subdivisions on for the same night in sketch and the same night for final has been a little hard to keep yeah. keep straight in my head yeah. sometimes right um okay would you guys like to give a little update on where you're at um, and um yeah uh in terms of the um the do sewer you make lines, sure you're close to the microphone uh, i know you 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 have a good carrying voice but i just want to make okay. sure that the in terms of the sewer lines we we did talk to uh our attorney jim palmazano on this he said these are the kind of things that are best left between the, the two people rather than written into the deed because things come up. And, you know, the way he kind of characterized it makes sense to me is that nowadays if something happens to your sewer line or your water line, they basically send a little transmitter down there, takes a minute or two, 
They know exactly where it is. They send in the heavy equipment. They dig it out. You know, a day or two later, everything's back in business. It's expensive, but it's, you know, it's quick. And you know, maybe maybe it's kind of a mess for a few days. But but what, what Jim was saying and what I was, when we discussed this was, you know, the house is like 20 feet or 30 feet, 20 feet from the street. There's on-street parking. Everybody uses it right nearby. It's not the end of the world if somebody has to dig up their sewer pipe in the back house. The front house will still be able to access the house. I mean, if a day or two may, might be lost. So those are the kind of things he thought would be best served by just leave, just setting up the easement and the parking and making it very clear, which we did. It's actually designated where the front house would park, where number seven would park. Um, and it is truly, the driveway is owned by the back house. So yeah. if he's got to dig up the driveway for his water pipe, I mean, nothing's going to stop that anyway. So, um, you know, it, it, it seems to me like it's probably, it's probably a non-issue and it's just, you know, not everything is perfect. Yeah. Um, sewer lines, things can happen. We just hope they don't. <laughs> Um, did you get a chance to review the staff report? Uh, yeah, for the yes. Day? You did. Um, and so it looks like uh, sort of one issue we should just discuss briefly, I think we did discuss it before, um, is the uh, um, sort of the frontage of the two, uh, the two parcels. Um, these parcels are accessed by a shared driveway, so it's a little bit of a different situation than if they both had their own, uh, own driveway. Um, Board's okay uh, with the, the analysis of staff uh, here, but um, I think that the shared driveway does put it into much a different category, and I'm okay with the, the frontages of the two parcels here. Okay. The shared driveway is the frontage. Oh, excuse exactly. me. The shared driveway is the frontage. For the for the parcel on the rear, yeah, yes. yeah, that shared driveway is is the frontage for the rear parcel. Okay, moving along here. Uh, for those following along, I'm on page uh, six of the uh, staff report. Um, and we have a couple notes here on um, the vehicle access and circulation. Um, and um, I don't think there are any major um, issues here, but thank you for providing the, the parking easement and that information. I think that does address the issues, uh, you know, brought up in the, you know, the um, uh, sketch plan. and. Uh, so I think we'll accept that um, as addressing that issue. Um, and um, so then uh, the next w item would be um, the parking and loading areas. Um, this is also on page six. Um, and um, I believe this looks like this is also addressed by the uh, easement that you drafted up between the two parcels um, and um, the dimensions here Meredith can you give me a little update on the dimensions mm -hmm. you, you have notes here <laughs> the so we have a 50 foot long driveway and a 16 feet wide um, is that what we're saying is the limits no no nope, nope. so 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 if you look on the plat oh yep, yep. right so there's actually a dimensions on there now this is the actual plat versus the site plan, right? Oh, existing conditions plan um, versus the survey plat. Um, so, and that was the one of the things that the the survey plat's going to need to show that those easements, right? Yes. My so that's luck. the that's the final tweak, right? Yep. Is once the board's okayed it, the item that needs to come to me for yep. um, recording is going to need to include that. Um, like that parking area and and easement bit on it, um, but if you look on the C1 Miller Family Trust existing conditions plan, you can see designating parking area for Seven Vine Street. It's eight and a half feet wide by 54 feet. I think that's 54 feet. Sorry, I need bifocals. 54 yep. feet long. So it's that fits. You know, parking yep. spaces need to be at least eight and a half feet wide. Mm -hmm. And they've just spelled out a length there so it's flexible depending on what happens to that front, 
different building. Um, so that that that, fits. That's, uh, that makes perfect sense. Um, any questions on that? Um, well, it's it's been the parking situation at the property yeah. for 35 years, and there's yeah. just no issue. Sure. Yeah. It's it's. Um, it's nice parking. It, yeah, there's, plen <laughs> there's plenty of room for everybody. I, I've never seen a lot of us an issue. We had parking. Though. I mean, these are small <laughs> houses, so we're yeah. not talking about families with three cars, or you know, we're talking about one car families, or sometimes two car families. And there's room for more if they have to be, yeah. but well, there's room for a visitor, right? They can exactly. have grandma come to visit well, and park. There's off also street. parking on the street. Yeah. <laughs> yep. When I when I go there, usually that's where I park. Um, on the street. Great. Um, so moving on to the design configuration of partial boundaries, um, we talked about the frontages, uh, and we, uh, we see no issue with that. Um, public and private utilities. Um, we, you know, I think talked to some about the underground utilities. I think say, thanks for your uh, due diligence on that. Uh, you know, on that part, I think it's good that that process happened. Uh, there's, yeah, it's underground. We can't see. Yes. Trust me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a surveyor myself, and we, we, we don't like dealing with underground stuff because we can't see it. So. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed living with the survey markers. Oh, and yeah. we're, we've been over there working a lot, yeah. and it's, it's good. It makes you look at the, yeah. you look at the property a little differently because, sure. you know, here's, oh, this is, this is the end of one property and the start of another. But. Wonderful. Um, and so uh, moving along... Um, one just key part to highlight, and this will be conditioned in the decision, is that um, you know you do need to make sure that the markers are installed on the the new proposed line um, as shown on the plat. Um, you know, prior to well, the recording of the plat, I guess is what when we specify that. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the yeah. all the new any new pins, yeah. anything yeah. like that that are noted in the plat need to go are, are going to get put in the ground. Yeah, yeah, they're in or, there now. They're about three feet okay. high with a, with a flag on them. <laughs> so that's been done. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's been that way. So for, they, so um, they're in the ground, but then they've months. got the, yeah. the higher Wonderful. notices still on top the of them. Ground. Wonderful. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and then the the actual metal unit is below the yeah. where the stake is. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, Rick's pretty Rick's pretty thorough about getting that stuff in, and then he'll yep. go back and move it if he has to later. But oh yeah. Um, so I. I think we've we've hit the key points here. I don't I don't see any any issues. Some of the stuff is just related to the one condition here of the um, just including the um, easement um, on the plat as we discussed. Um, board members have any other uh, questions or comments concerns? Okay. Seeing none, I would accept a motion here. All right, motion to approve a two parcel subdivision of parcel number 161-007000, including memorialization of a shared driveway as presented in application number Z-2023-0058 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval. The final survey plat for recording in the city land records as submitted to the zoning administrator for signature and recording shall include the appropriate references for the shared gravel drive, parking, and utility easement described in the draft language provided in the application and approved by this decision. And within 180 days of the, this decision, applicants shall record one, the final survey plat modified as required by condition one and two, the parking access and utility easement provided herein in the Montpelier land records office per the procedures detailed in section 4405 of the zoning regulations, including the locations of all applicable survey rods and markers. Second. Okay, motion by Joe, uh, second by Alex. Um, I will, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, let's accept a roll call vote. Uh, Joe, how do you vote? Yes. Alex? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Jean? And Rob, myself, votes yes. Um, that's unanimously approved. Um, so thank you so much. Awesome. Once we uh, 
Go ahead, Meredith. You're better at explaining <laughs> this than me. <laughs> so we'll get you the written decision as soon as we can. Um, and uh, yeah, so for this one, the condition is a after permit condition. So we'll be able to get you the, we'll be able to issue the permit with the um, decision, with the written decision, but then you're gonna wanna work with Rick to get the final details on the survey plat that'll get created into Mylar and sent to me. So um, when, if you want, I can talk, you know, we can talk to Rick ahead of time I think or- he's already on there. He just said he would wait till the meeting to okay, send it. Okay, great. So he can send it, if he wants to send it to me to just look over via email first before he prints it on Mylar, um, that works great. So you can talk to him, have it send it to me. And then, I mean, even if you get me the Mylar before the decision's out, we'll just wait till the decision and the permit's issued. But and there's then, no rush. Nope, there's no rush. I don't know. He, you know, if you are yeah, you just have you just you just have to do it and get it to me for recording with the easement within six months of the decision, the written decision. So Wonderful. you've got time um, if you want to wait and do that. You know, when there's a transfer or not, whichever you want to do. We won't forget. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, make because that's that's not something I necessarily track. I don't necessarily follow up on that. We actually had one recently where everybody was like, "Wait, what happened?" So. Yeah, well, don't it, forget. Because then you've got to do this whole process again. It's been great working with the board. I especially want to call out all the help we received from Meredith. Thank you. You're welcome. A common something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Good thank luck you. with your, good rest of your process. Thank you. Have a good night. I'm sure I'll see you soon, John. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. oh we just, we, or at least talk to you. We talk all the time. Absolutely. I think so, yeah. They're renting out both properties, and both houses. It's no okay. Uh, Paul, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. And actually, just so you know, Chris is here too. Oh, good. So Chris is coming up to the table, so the two of you can tag team this one. Hey, Chris. And we also have a couple other gardeners on the phone, Michael Verla and um, Ben Merrill. All right, so Michael and Ben, do you plan on uh, speaking on this application or are you just here to observe? Or even if you just think you might speak. Um, just be here to observe and support. Probably won't speak. Okay. <laughs> yep, same here. This is Ben. All right, wonderful. So uh, Chris and Paul, um, Paul, we'll just assume that you're raising your right hand. We can't see you, uh, but I trust you. <laughs> yes, it's being raised right now. Wonderful. Uh, and Chris, um, so um, cut right to it. Raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Yes, yes from Chris, yes from Paul. Um, and we are on to our application here of uh, 2481 Elm Street. Um, said it wasn't too long ago. We had a sketch plan application on uh, on this. And um, we'll go with you guys first this time. If you want to give a little update of what, what's happened since the sketch plan, and uh, we can go from there. Um, I think the main change, we made a few, there, you know, in the staff report for the sketch plan, there were some suggestions. Um, some of it related to what the state wants to see relative to the wastewater permit. Um, we understood from the state that, from DEC, that we were not required to get a wastewater permit, but we had to document on the survey plat the conditions that mean it's basically the distance from the existing house to the lot line was exceeded the minimum, which is 500 feet. And so um, we talked to our surveyor and that's now on the plat, which should, you should have a copy of that. I think the plat um, was updated, so it has all that information. Um, I think there's also a reference in the notes on the survey plat. Um, I think it might reference the deed that says that the that the property the smaller parcel that's being subdivided off 
is really just meant to be exclusively used as a community garden. Um, right. And also, Chris, if I can add that we have since added specific language that the DEC asked us to include, basically saying, if we do anything different with the property, we have to come in for a wastewater permit. And then right. the land is to be used, right? So, so that that land language is now incorporated into the draft deed, right? Oh, I mean, it, bas okay. it basically says in the deed that you acknowledge that you know basically the property may not be perkable and may not be developed for septic, and if if you want to go that route, you got to go through this whole process. But I think it's a, it's an acknowledgement in the deed that we we recognize that. There may not be you may not be able to put a septic on the, on the property, which was understood right from the beginning. Yeah, and there's two different places on the survey about the yeah. limiting of the use. Although I don't I'm trying to see, you said it was on the survey about the distance to the yeah. So it house. should be I'm marked. It's that like an overall feet. sketch there. Um, they've got a 640 oh, yep, yep, foot. Thank you. Yep. I was looking at the the close in. That's Perfect. on the Becky added. Yep. Yep. And other than that, I don't think there was any any other issues. We came back, Chris. Uh, they uh, the city asked us for information about what was it the um, impermeable surfaces, the amount of impermeable right. surface on the where the existing house is. We provided that information. We did right. calculate the impervious surface on the remaining lot. You know the buildings and the driveways, which are questionable how impervious they are, but. We totaled all that up, and it, I think it met the criteria for the minimum yep. or whatever, maximum allow or whatever. Yep. Wonderful. Um, and then they added in, sorry, I'm just going to jump in. They yep. added in the details so that there's a map here in the record now about the river corridor yep. um, and the um, flood hazard area. So that was one of the other items that the board had wanted to get, get clear. I, I also just want to add, it, it might not be clear, but the gardeners are really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about it because we've gone from a place where we might not, like last year, close that we wouldn't even be able to garden there. And then with the sale of the land imminent, also we were threatened to close the garden. So we are really excited just the concept that this garden is going to be, you know, protected in perpetuity. So I just, I just wanted to make sure that was clear the level of excitement and happiness from some of us well and i think just on that note that condition in this type of application uh you know sort of makes much of the other analysis of it uh a little bit uh maybe easier uh, to get through um you, you you folks have done a very good job of documenting it in multiple places so that in the future somebody uh if for some reason the garden disappears and people forget there was ever a garden there uh, and we have you know two parcels that it will be very clear as soon as someone digs into it that uh you know there's there's one purpose for this lot and it was community garden and i think that's important for the zoning process important for other processes as well um so um i don't i mean i don't see any major issues here to address meredith was there any technical things that we're missing here um, for final review. Um, no, but I'm, what I'm realizing is, I think Audrey gave you guys the wrong staff report. Oh, really? Yeah, this is sketch subdivision review. <laughs> uh, let me no, see. Well, mine's I, just, okay, so mine's I, just final. So somehow I got a wrong copy. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you guys got the right one. <laughs> Yours is sketch. The online one. The online. All right. So she posted the wrong one online. Yeah, I um, the motion was. Oh my gosh. All right. So somebody who has one that has the motion, because I'm sitting here going, "What happened?" Um, all right. So sorry about that. Goodness, Audra's out for several days, and I have stomach illness in my house, and everything falls apart. Um, we're, good. we're all good. Yep. We're all yeah, we, uh, <laughs> paper heart, the hard copy never fails. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, uh, so one of you has a motion, uh, but yeah, this is all, yeah. you know, it's, it all seemed to be buttoned up. Yep. You know, this is a, it's an, it's a atypical subdivision, yes. but 
the reasons for it being atypical are documented enough that I think the board can approve it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, I can make a motion. Go ahead, Catherine. Okay. Are you all ready for a motion? Yes. <laughs> to approve a two parcel subdivision of 2000. Uh, 481 Elm Street as presented in application number Z 2023-0059 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following condition that within 180 days of this decision the applicant shall record the final survey plat in the Montpelier Land Records Office per the procedures detailed in 4405 of the zoning regs including the location of all applicable survey rods and markers. Okay, thank you second. Catherine. Second, second by Jean. Um, any discussion on the motion to approve? Seeing none, Gene, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Alex? Yes. Joe? Yes. And Rob, myself, was yes. That's unanimously approved. Yeah. Good luck. Yay. Good. Oh, that will teach me not to check every single attachment on the <laughs> online version. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have multi factor authentication of these uh, applications. <laughs> this is why I love getting the printout at the police station. You know? <laughs> It's secure. Well, but, but what's printed out is supposed to be what's online. I don't yeah. know how that happens. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, the two. Yeah, it's, it's team effort. Yeah, redundancies, oh. yeah. So I'm glad I didn't read the staff report on the online version. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been totally confused. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to blame it on the, the, the stomach illness. Meredith, can, this is Paul. Can I ask a question? Yes. Can you just give us, without putting you in a spot, oh, hold on. can you give, give us a... Go ahead, Paul. Can you repeat? A ballpark in terms of when we you might issue uh, the rule, whatever it's called, the opinion, the uh, findings for the city on this. I honestly, I'm going to get to it as soon as possible, but I have three coming out of tonight. Each decision is almost as long, if sometimes not longer, than the staff reports. So a lot of it is same language, but those all have to be created in amongst all the other work I'm doing. And Audra's out for the next two days, so any questions that come into the office that normally go to her, go to me. So I'm going to do my very best to get it out as soon as possible. I honestly don't know exactly when. I, 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 like I said, I was, you know, I was out two days last week because of stomach illness in my family. So I'm going to do my very, very best. Um, no, 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 it's just a ballpark. It was fine. That's, that's I, I'm ready to you. I, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get everything done in the next two weeks before I have to do staff reports for the next meeting that's in two weeks. Um, I'll do my best. But, yeah. you know, I've got to, I have to have a staff report for the meeting in two weeks. So if I don't get all three done before then, I have to switch gears to the staff report. Um, for that public hearing. Well, I think board members can attest that Meredith's highly productive. Yes. <laughs> and and our, just a clarification, our understanding is that once you get the permit, there's a 30-day comment period. Oh, th there's a 30-day appeal period appeal after period. the decision. So right. because there's no conditions on here, I'll be able to issue the decision and the permit on the same day. So as soon as I got that decision ready and Rob has signed it, we can issue that and issue the permit, and then there's a 30-day appeal period. Right. Nobody has come in to, to talk, but because you're talking about then recording um, the subdivision and the land transfer, attorneys usually say, mm, you should wait to do that recording of documentation right. until after that appeal period is over. I think we're prepared over. for that. So. Yeah. The landowners, so, the landowner's yeah. okay with that. For sure. Yep. Yep, so that's that's usually, I think, what attorneys would would argue in favor. Um, and so then, um, so part of that process will be having that final mylar printed. I think you're familiar with the process, Chris. Right, um, and, and she'll have to set the pins. Yep. She hasn't done that yet. I think probably wait till after that comment period. Sure, and then once the mylar's ready, bring that to my office because Rob will need to sign it. Um, so we'll need to coordinate on that um, because this is associated with a transfer. If you want to then be able to record that at the same time as um, the deeds and everything, let me know. And I'll just tell you when it's signed and then you can take it upstairs to the clerk's office with mm -hmm. everything else. Um, sometimes for those subdivisions where you want to record it before the actual transfer happens. Mm -hmm. Um, I just take it upstairs and gets recorded immediately right. as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, we have to go to the city council still for 
approval of the transfer. Right, so. right, right, right. So yeah, wait till you've got all that done, and and I forgot about that aspect of the transfer too. Um, but you know, maybe bring me the mylar after you've got the city council approval sure. and do all that. But we'll we'll coordinate for sure. Great. I think we're done. We're, we're not going to go to the city council until we have the permit. And have um, the approval from the city, right? Is that? No, but you have verbal approval right now. If they need proof, we can cut out the the video of the. You know, there's going to be minutes of the meeting. Um, by the it should be by the end of this week if our recording secretary gets it uh, done on time. So that will be proof that it's gotten the approval. I think you can go to uh, council before you have yeah, the written decision. I wouldn't wait. We've gone both ways on that. Sometimes oh, good. folks have come here and good. like there's a conditional yeah. approval with city council and you know back and forth. So I think yeah, don't let it hold you up. Just yeah, right. don't let it hold. I mean, you have the approval. It's just not in writing yet. Okay. Well, we can. I'm not sure about the council schedule and all that stuff, so I'll have to yeah. figure that out. So work, but you can work with the manager's right. office to, to make sure you know what so how we'll to work do on that. that Paul. Yeah, I'll work on it. Okay. All right. right. I'm signing off. Yep. Well, thank Last you. Thing is, all right. Can you guys, can you guys make sure we get some rain. The garden it's really nice. <laughs> so if you guys can work on that, I mean, you have all sorts of powers. I, mean, I just thought. Should we go up to the roof of City Hall and do a little rain dance for you? Yeah. That's a that's a city council mm -hmm. matter. So oh. I have no, no authority. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I think we're gonna be okay. That was good, Rob. That's out of your jurisdiction, I bet. All right, well, thank you again. I'll echo the previous speaker that it's been great to work with Meredith. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, some other business. Um, we don't have we have we have a limited quorum tonight, um, but I just we do want to highlight Meredith has put some work into. Um, over the last several weeks, I guess, months maybe, uh, uh, chipping away at it. <laughs> no, I, I just couldn't get to it till recently. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so she has prepared some draft um, amendments to our procedures. So I, I would encourage you to review that if you have comments. That's, I, I think it'd be great to uh, to get that on our agenda for approval. Uh, there are some quite outdated things in there, and um, and so uh, just look at that. And uh, you know, hopefully, maybe have some feedback by our next meeting and week. What's our process for that, Meredith? Uh, as far as just a one meeting, right? Yeah, the, for, to, for amend the rules of procedure, it's yep. not like trying to amend the zoning regulations. These are your guys' sure. rules. You can just have a vote sure. on it. Um, you know, if possible, I would have as many members here as possible yep. and get comments from people. Um, just as sort of as an overview, you know, we we had discussions six months ago yep. about things in here that were outdated um you know there were there was some I, I moved some language around because that the the item about um members not being current members of the planning commission was sort of buried so i just moved that up to membership um we have and alex wouldn't be familiar with this we had a situation where both our chair and our vice chair had to recuse themselves from an application because of conflicts of interest and there was no procedure in here for um, yep. having a, a temporary acting vice chair or anything. So we have added that in here just to be abundantly clear. I mean, we were able to get attorney's advice and know that we could do it, but making sure it's clear in the rules of procedure seemed like a smart move. Um, and then there were some other tweaks about process because there were certain items in here that the board just hasn't done in years because how certain permits got approved by the city got amended in 2018 right um and so there were there were several tweaks in here like the references to the board during its agenda um having uh what was it reviewing administrative approvals or um yeah, the consent agenda items. It used to be every single permit that went to design review came to the development review board as a consent, consent agenda item. Every single permit. So, you know, the board would have maybe three or four consent agenda items every um, meeting, plus many, many more administrative permits. Right. You know, things that are administrative now would come before the board. So the board might have five, six, sometimes seven additional applications that they had to review every meeting. This is much better volunteer management. <laughs> this yeah. is much better volunteer management. <laughs> you know, it's a little more for two people to handle in the office, but 
we would have had to look at them all anyway to get them to the board. Exactly. So yes, that is appropriately in the packet um, as a red line draft. And I can also, if you just want me to send you another version of it, I can do that. Um, so yeah, there's a red line on in that packet yeah. at the end. I think it's in the printed packet too, or at least yeah. I got yeah. a copy. And the printed one, I assume this is all track changes, correct? So yeah, that's all track changes. Hold on, I've got another one. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. I have a question about the recusal. Yes. yes, go ahead. Um, which I thought about before I came in, since my husband and I are butters to 149 State. Yep. Should I have said something about that? You you disclosed it. I did. You did disclose it, so that's yeah. that's sufficient. Nobody objected, and it's not like you have a financial interest in that. So, you know, there there was no need for you to recuse. The disclosal was disclosure. Sorry, was sufficient and the appropriate thing to do. Okay. Yeah. And you know the. I didn't have to say that I knew George when he was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> no. We would have very long meetings in this town if we had to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you taught at U32 and yeah. other places. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, it's, yeah, if we, oh my goodness, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, okay. on that note, uh, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Alex, second by Joe. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Wonderful.